Thank you, Gus. Hello, everybody. I'm so, so thrilled to be here at Conf and to get to speak to the audience that has made Nginx so powerful and so popular today. Uh, I want to share a little bit more about how F5 is thinking about uh, the combination of F5 and Nginx, and what do we really mean when we say bridging the divide? And I'll start with a story. So this was a visit to a customer a couple of months ago, uh, mostly uh, F5 folks in the room. Now, in the center, we have the CIO. And the CIO introduced his team to us. He said, on my left, those are the IT ops guys. They use F5. They love your hardware. They know everything about iRules. And they know everything about how F5 makes your apps go faster, safer, and smarter. And to my right, that's the app dev and DevOps team. They don't know you. They just heard that you bought Nginx, and they're not too happy about it. <laughs> they want to know if you're going to try to put Nginx in your hardware. And more importantly, they want to know if you're going to continue to allow Nginx to be open source. At which point, the two teams started debating angrily and fighting. The CIO raises his hands, and he said, you see what I'm talking about? I need someone to bring these two teams together. And that's what we were really trying to do. So Gus talked about how applications must evolve. They must move towards becoming living organisms. And that's going to be a challenging task for all of us, because applications are actually quite complex. It takes a lot of people and a lot of time to get through the whole development cycle, through to deployment, through to operation, and into governance. And not many companies do this well for a single app, let alone hundreds or even thousands. And just to add a bit of what all is going on here, you have to deal with the CI CD tools as part of the development process. You need to deal with the app servers, the web servers, oftentimes a, a whole boatload of open source tooling and capability. In the deployment side, it's about the provisioning, the orchestration, the scale, and the performance of your application. Then you get into the operations, where you have to think about central management, visibility and monitoring, automation, patching. And then into the governance, where very, very few companies actually do very well here. They think about security and privacy, compliance, and the total cost of ownership. And all of this has to be orchestrated across a number of stakeholders, including the app developers, the DevOps teams, the net op network operations person personnel, the security operations teams, and the app owners. And this makes it very, very complex to put an app out to market, and even more complex to keep that app up and running. And so when we talk to many of our customers, and I'm, I'm going to reflect here a bit of the enterprise view, they have several challenges they're dealing with in their digital transformations. First, delivering code at web scale with speed and reliability. Now, Gus talked about this. How do you deliver your customers an experience that's equivalent to what Facebook and Google can, and do it consistently so that your app always makes it to its customer? So that's the first one. The second one, then, is how do you reduce the cycle times it takes to develop and deploy apps so that you can iterate through that cycle, not in a matter of months like most classic enterprises, but in a matter of days like the web scale players? The third challenge is around how do you scale the number of apps that you can take through this cycle every year? Again, if you compare what a web scale company can do, those companies are putting out thousands of applications or services on an annual basis. In comparison, many classic enterprise companies that haven't gone through any sort of full transformation are dealing in the order of magnitude of tens. So it's a huge difference. And when you think about how apps are becoming the most important asset of the modern enterprise, these capabilities to be able to do them fast and, and manage many of these iterations are very important. The fourth challenge that we see from our customers is around how do they secure and govern their portfolio. And when I say portfolio, I mean all of their apps. We're not talking about some subset that they deem as the most important. And then the last challenge is something that rolls across all of these. How do you get visibility? These challenges familiar to anybody? Some folks? So then going back to this chain that, that Gus talked about, code to customer, let's talk about all the things that could possibly go wrong in that chain. So you've got your code on the one side. You simply want to get it to a customer on the other side. And it has to go through an app server and a web server. You know, Oftentimes, we see customers using things, uh, a whole bunch of tool sets here. For example, Microsoft IIS, Apache, uh, other, other selections, uh, WebSphere, WebLogic. 
Then it has to go through an ingress controller. Um, this, is, this is the case if, if your app is being served out of a microservices environment. Next thing to go through would be an API gateway. And again, there's a boatload of vendors that, that you, many of our customers uh, look at. Think about MuleSoft, Apigee. You get to the load balancer. Load balancing options, there's tons of them now. Uh, there's uh, F5, of course. There's ALB, ELB, NLB from, from the public cloud players. Other options as well. The web app firewall. This is another one where there's a bunch of vendors. Uh, many companies using things like Imperva and Capsula. F5 is another option there. DNS, again, more vendors. DDoS, Arbor, Radware. Then you get to the CDN. Think about Akamai or Cloudflare or Fastly. And then finally, your code reaches your customer. And this is just a simple example. This is an example where there's literally eight things in the data plane between your code and your customer. And the question that I like to ask our customers when we paint this picture and we look at what their environment is, because oftentimes they'll have eight different technologies on that path, is what happens when things go wrong? And unfortunately, they don't have a great answer. So where are we going with F5 and Nginx? Well, if you look at the combination of the two, F5 and Nginx bring the most comprehensive set of data path cap capabilities together. Between Nginx Unit and Nginx OSS and Nginx Plus, uh, there's coverage of the app server, the web server, the ingress controller, the API gateway, the load balancer. With ModSec on Nginx, you get access to a web application firewall. And then with the capabilities of the big IP and F5 portfolio, we also have coverage of load balancing, best-in-class web app firewall, DNS, DDoS, and now we're looking also at CDN at some point. And what does that mean for you? Well, any of these capabilities can run on any infrastructure. It means you're no longer tied or locked into the underlying infrastructure that you choose to pick. And so we have a commitment and a technology principle such that all of our data plane components can run on public cloud. We cover AWS, Azure, GCP, Ali Cloud today, as well as a couple others. It can run on virtual machines. It can run on COTS hardware. And it can run on F5 proprietary hardware if you really want hardware acceleration. All of those are options, but the capability and the functionality is the same regardless of where you choose to run these things. And we're also committed to providing end-to-end -end visibility, orchestration, and control. And so you saw on a prior page from Gus, he talked about the control plane at the top and then the brain above that. And so what you see here is that F5 is committed to providing a best-in-class control plane for our data plane components, as well as the visibility and analytics at the top with multi-vendor orchestration. And so that is really the value proposition and the architecture that we're aiming for. And this covers all parts of the application lifecycle, all the way from develop to deploy to secure and govern and operate. And so what can you expect from F5 going forward? Simply put, we want you to be able to get your code to your customers in less than one day. And over time, allow you to scale that capability to thousands of apps in a year. It's that simple. And so from today and going forward into the next several months, here are the things that we're working on at F5 and Nginx. And the, this, these all have that goal designed into them. So on the development side, we're going to continue to invest in Nginx's best-in-class web server, Nginx's application server, their API gateway, and all with a clear commitment to open source. In the deployment side, we also have a commitment to be multi-cloud and multi-platform with best-in-class automation, orchestration, and ecosystem, and also policy templates to let you enable abstraction of your policies across to any environment. In the operate area, we're also committed to providing best-in-class central management solutions that span big IP and also in central management solutions that span the Nginx capabilities that you have. We're committed to application portfolio visibility because we don't think it's acceptable in this age that companies don't know how many applications they actually have running in their environments. And we're also committed to end-to-end -to -end application analytics because we also don't believe it's acceptable for you not to know how many times your application actually reached your customers and how long it took for it to get there. And in the governance space, we're committed to centralized policy management, a common view of risk across all of your applications, and standard compliance reporting, because those are all capabilities that our customers look for and need when they start thinking about managing their applications, much like their other assets, like their large capital investments. 
And so that's the vision for F5 and Nginx. That's what we're bringing together as the two com combined companies. And I couldn't be more excited for you to go on this journey with us. Thank you.